42, which graph represents the relationship between the magnitude of the gravitational force exerted by Earth on a spacecraft and the distance between the center of the spacecraft and the center of the Earth? Assume constant mass for the spacecraft. Okay, so what's going on? We have the Earth. So the Earth is kind of big relative to this little spacecraft that's out here. This is our spacecraft. And the Earth is exerting a gravitational force on the spacecraft, right, pulling it toward. And they want to know how the distance between the center of the Earth and the center of that spacecraft, so maybe that's this distance here, call that D. You know what, I'm going to call that R. Sometimes they call it R. Um, how does that distance affect the strength of that gravitational force? So we want to know the relationship between the distance r and the gravitational force. Well, in general, when, when something is near Earth, we say the force of gravity equals mg, right? But that's making an assumption that the, uh, this is the mass of the object, that the mass of the Earth doesn't come into play, that it's relatively close to the Earth. But in more general terms, if we want to use universal gravitation, we would say that Fg instead equals this universal gravitation constant times the mass of one of the objects times the mass of the other object. So maybe one of these is the spacecraft and the other is Earth. And that all gets divided by the distance squared. And this is really the relationship we want to focus on. This Fg force of gravity equals mass times... So in other words, this g is 9.81 meters per second squared, right? That's not a universal thing. That's a characteristic of what happens on Earth when you're relatively close to the Earth. It's not a universal truth. This is a more general formula, which will ultimately, we can, I could do the proof that'll show you that the gravitational acceleration on Earth is always going to be 9.81. But elsewhere in the universe, it may not be true. And this more general formulation will always hold true. Okay, that said, the force of gravity depends on this constant, the mass of each of the objects, and the distance squared. So they want to know the relationship between the force and the distance. So let me ask you this. As the distance becomes larger, what happens to the force? As the spacecraft, suppose the spacecraft wasn't here, suppose it was even further away, would Earth's force be greater or less? It would be less, right? Because as this r gets bigger, it's going to make, it's in the denominator on the right side, so it's going to make the total value of the right side smaller, which means the force of gravity would be smaller. So we can actually cross out 1 and 2, because 1 and 2 are basically saying that as that distance gets greater and greater, as you move to the right on the x-axis, the gravitational force is going to get greater. So whether that relationship be curved or straight it's definitely it's definitely wrong it isn't it isn't getting larger the gravitational force is getting smaller as the objects are further and further apart so it's got to be 3 or 4 so now the question is is that a linear relationship where with every increase in distance the further and further you may move the spaceship away is it a correspondingly equal change in the gravitational force or is it related to this square and it turns out that this is the relationship that actually holds true. The further you get away, those, those forces from Earth decrease less and less, and it becomes asymptotic to the x-axis. And as you move the spaceship closer and closer, the Earth's force exerted on the spaceship is greater and greater. It gets greater really fast. And that's why it's asymptotic to the y-axis. This is a, a power law relationship. And any time you see a relationship algebraically speaking, where you have uh, y related to 1 over x squared. This is kind of the same relationship as what we see here, and that's what it looks like.